Yeah, very much so. Yeah, we can. Okay. Yes. Okay, all right, fantastic. Right. Um today um I just want to say um greet um say um good day to everyone wherever you uh, uh you are those in um Australia and those online. Um my name is um Emeka Luke Okolie and um I'm um, presenting from uh, um University of Wolverhampton, United Kingdom. So my topic is on um, towards sustainable road infrastructure projects under public-private partnership in Southeast Nigeria. So under um, the title, I've got my supervisors and my um, co-authors, um, Dr. David Oloke, Dr. Emmanuel Daniel, and Dr. Toch Kumozis. So the theme has, um, Dr. Akintola have just said um, is, uh, public-private partnership, past, present, and future. As we all know that um, public PPP is, uh, is been there for years now and um, is still making waves, um, whereas some countries are lagging behind, some other countries are pushing as they have recognized the benefit. So here I've got my agenda for the, um, for this presentation. So the first one is introduction followed by methodology and then some literature review and results, um, which includes the overview of PPP in other countries, overview of PPP in Nigeria, and then the prevalence of PPP. And then um, I've got a bit of discussion on it and the way forward and then um, with the conclusion. So first of all, I just want to say that um, PPP has been practiced all over the world and uh, both in developed countries and developing countries. So, but this paper is actually presenting um, this uh, uh, P, uh, towards sustainable um, develop, um, development of PPP in Southeast Nigeria. Southeast Nigeria is a developing country and uh, this paper presents this as a um, a way whereby developing countries can take advantage of PPP. So the road infrastructure in Nigeria, they are poorly maintained, um, but also largely insufficient, as it's been discovered in the literature. And also, according to the ICRSC, which are the regulate, Concession Regulatory Commission, so they confirm that 17% um, of Nigerian roads are poor and 60% of populace have no access to electricity. So some certain villages don't have electricity in Nigeria and that can affect uh, uh, investments in a country. So Southeast Nigeria have the capacity to have number of investments, but due to the lack of uh, inadequate infrastructure ranging from roads to air and seaports, that's why they haven't been having investments. And another thing to point out is that um, the inability of the government to provide needed finance to put this infrastructure in place. So it actually makes um, PPP arrangements very difficult because the government don't put any arrangement for it. In other words, um, this research um, aim is presenting PPP as a solution to inadequate road infrastructure scheme in Southeast Nigeria. So in Nigeria, um, the roads are abandoned for years and nobody does anything about it. So I've managed to go through the literature to see the recent um, comparing countries, finding out how have they achieved it? What method have they used? What models have they used? What models of PPP? So, and I've managed to discover the various practices they've done. So, in terms of the geographical area of this study, um, is the Southeast Nigeria, which have five states in it. And the five states are Anambra, Enugu, Ebony, Abia, and Imo states. This particular area of Nigeria are landscaped, um, locked. Um, they don't really have like any way out, like a seaport to travel to other areas. So there's no seaports and um, the um, 
flights as well from those areas are not that huge so there is a good opportunity if this area can invest more on road infrastructure and other ways through ppp so here is a typical example of uh, abandoned roads um i can assure you that this road um with the pothole um can stay like this for over 10 years and nothing will be done about it and why is this so it's because traditionally government fund majorly all the roads in nigeria so if this was a ppp road i can assure you that this road is not going to be like this it's going to be properly maintained so on here on my right you can see um a good road which is very smooth and the cars everything motorcycle everything goes through it and i've got example of um a lucky toll gate this is a toll gate in southwest nigeria in lagos so this road is um is maintained and even though uh, it was a pp road um, there was setback at the beginning and even up until now some people are disputing they are not ready to pay the toll get money and these are the issues that arise whenever a ppp road is mentioned but after a while they will be overcome because the um some of the citizens are happy as long as the roads are well maintained in developing countries and on my right is a uh, uh, MC Stowgate in United Kingdom, the same way there were issues within the um, the people, the stakeholders living in the community. Um, but now all these have been dissolved and there's no issues. So this road, I pass through it in United Kingdom. So when you pass through it, you pay some money and then it's a faster road going through Birmingham and other areas. So in terms of methodology, um, it was a critical review uh, which tried to address um, the aim of the research. Um, and I used uh, Scopus and Web of Science. So my first query um, was, um, I found um, in terms of PPP, I find about 5,356 articles concerning PPP. And then um, I narrowed it down to road transport and infrastructure, and I got about 105. And then I now decided to find out exactly the area I'm searching for, um, which is um, the usage of PPP, area of application other than engineering, and um, emphasis on road infrastructure, which got me about 42 uh, articles that was used for this research. And then it was narrowed down to peer reviewed journals, which we are 31, and then um, conference proceedings, which we are 11. So, in terms of limitations, um, um, there were issues because there are not enough empirical study um, within the um, geographical study area of um, Southeast Nigeria about PPP. So, in my um, results, um, in terms of literature review, in my paper, I've got covered various aspects um, due to time management. Uh, I might not go into everything. So the first one I covered was the concepts and features of PPP. So within that, I touched on the benefits of PPP. So I looked about five examples of benefits of PPP, which various countries have um, adopted and can um, testify to it. And then um, PPP models, I looked at the various types of PPP models, how countries um, use PPP. So we have the boats, which is build, own and transfer and various other models of PPP, which I've um, explained and discussed in my paper. And also the second area was um, overview of PPP in other countries. So I looked at um, other countries like um, UK, and um, how much they use PPP and um, over 15 to 20 percent projects are done within the PPP um, within UK for the past um, 20 years. And then in Sri Lanka as well, um, Sri Lanka have been um, investing heavily on PPP 
Um, so there has been a collaboration between the government and the private sector, whereby they have toll roads and toll infrastructures. So in Chile, Chile is one of the countries that have um, used this model of PPP, whereby the um, uh, in, uh, roads and various other infrastructures are constructed using the PPP. And then Australia is also um, one of the areas um, where there is a huge success. And in terms of Africa, um, South Africa, um, and then um, Niger Southwest Nigeria, um, which is Lake Toll Gates, and also uh, the Motala Mohammed Airport. These are areas that have um, uh, benefited from um, PPP. And also, I looked at overview of PPP in Nigeria. Um, so as I just mentioned, the Lekki Express Toll Road, um, which um, there was a bit of um, protest going around that um, some certain citizens, um, the people, stakeholders living around the area, they were not happy to pay money again because they feel the governments are not doing what they're supposed to do. So, and then the challenges on PPP, I touched on that um, because um, one of the challenges was the government, um, there are no access to fi local finance to some of these private sectors that construct these roads and maintain these roads. And other challenges we are um, lack of sharing um, the risks. So the governments are not ready to share the risks. So, and I also looked at the prevalence of PPP. So how PPP have progressed within the um, past few years and um, how are people taking PPP? So I've um, also managed to touch on certain areas in terms of the results, what are going on now and how PPP have progressed in Nigeria. So, and um, in terms of the literature, developing and developed countries like UK and Sri Lanka um, suggest that various issues such as high costs and complexity um, can be overcome using PPP, um, using a good regulatory framework as done in Australia. So Australia have a good framework in terms of PPP. So when you have to have a um, public-private partnership um, roads or infrastructure. And a transparent procurement process has obtained in Chile. So Chile have a very good um, transparent when you want to um, use PPP and it's been a huge success within the country. And to further go down to Africa, um, Policy making and management issues are prevalent and needed to be addressed to have a viable PPP. And also, um, government needs to play a role, a significant role. So, because some policy making for PPP, supporting legal system and governance practices are required for PPP to actually um, work in Nigeria. Overall, um, Nigeria um, road infrastructure projects, they are faced with many challenges. For example, um, managerial incompetence, poor legal framework, there's no proper legal framework to manage roads, um, uh, PPP roads, and then government policy, and then hurdles in public acceptance. So there are uh, protest people living within the village or the community sometimes, and then negative perception. All these are some of the challenges um, faced with PPP in Nigeria. For sustainable and prosperous road infrastructure in Southeast Nigeria under PPP, there, there is like the need for policy making that is also implemented in true sense. So, for instance, to do this, the involvement of private companies is immense and important in policy making. So, there is need for private sectors to be involved in the policy making. So the government shouldn't just make the policy without involving oh, them. Sorry, please. Can you try to wind up now? Because again, you have overspent your time. OK, all right. So um, it is crucial for government to actually consider the improvement of PPP policy in Nigeria. And then for the way forward, this paper have identified um, boots, which is the uh, build, own, and then um, transfer. Um, so the government, um, we, collab uh, we collaborate with the private sector 
to build um, to build the, the private sector will build the road and then um, manage it for over years like 30 years and then transfer it to the um, um, government uh, to the community so and then to discover this sustainable road infrastructure will be obtained in southeast Nigeria so however empirical research is needed in this context in southeast Nigeria because um, there is no viable framework proposed in conclusion um, there is consequence of funding majorly roads in Nigeria government fund them and then they need to um, share the risk also. And then um, in terms of further study, um, this study recommends that suitable PPP model, um, regulatory framework and a transparent procurement process be put in place to express the sources recorded in um, UK, Chile and other countries I mentioned above. So, and the next phase of this study is to develop a PPP model framework to manage the um, road infrastructure in Southeast Nigeria. And here I've got my references and I'm ready to take your question. Sorry that I um, took my time for that. Uh, sorry, we won't be able to take questions now because we have overspent by about three or four minutes, but at the end if we have time we might still be able to come back and then have general discussions uh, so if you want to wait and be part of this that would be nice um, the next paper will be by nana from uh, south africa it's going to be looking at um, persistent ineff ineffectiveness in the delivery of low income housing in south africa again uh, again it's an online presentation uh, are you able to share your with us your presentation, Nana. Emeka, please, can you? Yeah, I, I will just take off my mic. I will hang around for any questions after. I will, I will be okay. around. Okay, then, thank you. Yeah. Is Nana there, please? Mm, can you hear me? Okay, we can hear you. Please, can you share with us your, your presentation, please? Okay, I'm not sure if my my camera is is visible that side. Is it not really? It's not. Let Can you see. continue? Something might be coming up. He's thinking through it. Okay, uh, we can see you now. We can see that. Please. Again, you have about 10 to 12 minutes for your presentation. I will let you know when it remains two minutes. Uh, I think it. Uh, okay, let me. You can start now. You can see. OK, um, good morning. Um, it's morning from my side. Um, I hope you can see the. Yes, you um, can see. Them. OK, um, my name is Nana Mklongo. Um, I am a PhD candidate at the University of Johannesburg and um, I appreciate the opportunity to make this presentation. Um, my, um, my topic is um, inefficiencies in the delivery of low income housing in South Africa. Um, is governance a missing ingredient? Um, so this um, a presentation is based on the literature review. Um, which is part of um, a, my, um, my my thesis. So um, in terms of then my presentation, these are the areas that I'll look into, the background, introduction, theoretical framework, and um, look into some of the housing, low-income housing delivery approaches um, and examples of, uh, of, um, of projects um, that um, have been, uh, that have failed. Um, in terms of background, South Africa is one of the most urbanized and highly industrialized countries in Africa. 
Um, as such, over 61% of the population in, is in the urban areas in the country continues to urbanize. Poor access to housing manifests through informal settlements, slums, and backyard dwellings um, in the urban areas. Um, housing is a necessity and is recognized as a basic human need um, and a right, um, which is mainly considered to be one of the effective uh, indicators um, uh, of the extent to which poverty ha has, has been er eradicated in any country. In South Africa, numerous housing um, policy interventions have been implemented. Um, however, the housing backlog is still estimated at more than 2 million. Um, as such, um, the Statistics South Africa, which is um, a, a, the, 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 the entity of government responsible for um, a, a, a statistics, shows that more than 81% um, a, a, a of South African households live in formal dwellings um, with 12.7 percent in informal dwellings, while um, 5.1 uh, live in conventional dwellings. So th this is just demonstrating the extent of the, the, the problem within the South African context. Um, in terms of then the introduction, this paper examines, concludes and proposes on importance of governance in the delivery of low income housing projects. And from the 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 the, the um, a governance theory, it's really looking into um, the the part active participation of uh, different stakeholders um, a, in the decision making um, as as a, as, a, as, a, as an in, a, a, an important um, ingredient for um, housing a, a, a development and an efficient uh, delivery of housing projects. Um, the, the paper also unpacks the broader concept of governance and projects uh, and locates it in the, in, in the context of housing. So the specific objectives of this paper is to analyze low income housing delivery processes within the South African context using literature, but also to gather um, uh, information on prevalent um, low income housing case studies um, uh, in, in South Africa in different pro uh, uh, provinces. The theoretical framework that um, underpins this study is that um, governance is governance theories that are advocating for stakeholder participation, transparency and accountability in the delivery of public services. The concept governance is anchored in the public management um, discourse, which focuses on the administrative capacity um, of, of government. As such, uh, governance um, a, a, is, is um, about interactions um, among structures, processes, traditions that determine how power and responsibilities are exercised, decisions made, and um, a stakeholder uh, voice uh, made possible during um, the, the, the process of delivery of services. Emphasis is on the distinction between governance and government. Um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, highlighting that uh, it encompasses the aspects of governing, rule, authority, decision making and, domin uh, and domination um, uh, in terms of uh, structures. Uh, I'm trying to move to the next slide. Um, okay. Then um, I've just selected um, two low income housing delivery approaches in South Africa, which one is informal settlement upgrading as well as social housing, but to highlight some of the uh, failures that have been experienced um, while uh, delivering, um, which highlights then the importance um, of governance. One is, um, I think it was the highly publicized and to get to a project which was an informal settlement uh, uh, upgrading where there were a lot of um, uh, challenges um, starting from um, the, the political um, uh, 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 challenges, but as well as from concerns from the uh, community not being consulted on their needs. Um, as well as um, uh, in terms of uh, the occupation. So it, it, it while it was hailed as a, a groundbreaking uh, project, but it, it had a lot of failures in, 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 the, in, in the process. And that has been a project, a, 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 an issue in terms of um, other mega projects that have been uh, implemented um, a, a, a across um, the, 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 the country in South Africa. Um, uh, the other um, approach is uh, in terms of social housing, um, also a, a, which is also based on um, a government sub subsidy, 
where there are social housing institutions uh, mainly um, driven by uh, government institutions. While um, a, a, th there was a target um, a, in terms of um, delivering um, a, a, a 50,000 social housing units, there was a shortfall of about, we, we, by the time a, a, the, 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 the financial year had ended um, of 27,000. So it, it implies um, that there is um, inefficiencies in terms of um, the, the delivery. Um, a, a, that uh, a, in the models that are used um, for the delivery of um, a, of a, a, these uh, a low income housing uh, projects. So this slide is just demonstrating um, some of the examples um, of projects that have um, failed, um, meaning it uh, the construction happened. Um, and it's either th there was a disagreement in terms of the beneficiaries um, uh, from the community perspective that had to occupy, or the, 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 the beneficiaries were not happy with um, uh, the location of the, the, the project. And some of the projects then, while the construction has already happened, um, a, a, a co community members would use them um, a, a, in terms of um, a, a take the material for their own uh, purposes so you will be left um, with a uh, skeleton structures while also then th there were concerns also where then th there were those ghost um, projects that could not um, uh, were not occupied where then there, there were a lot of uh, criminal activities in the different um, uh, 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 communities so this is just uh, demonstrating um, the the, the, the issues that um, uh, demonstrate inefficiencies and a, a lack of collaboration between um, a government institutions, um, the, the, um, the citizens and uh, would be beneficiaries, but also in terms of the role that the private sector can play. So the, the main issues that are coming out from the literature is that um, government agencies and institutions prove to be inefficient and government is supposed to govern and not administer um, a buildings or um, a housing projects. Uh, the other point is that um, a housing provision is always in, comp in competition for financial resources with other social issues um, such as health uh, within the South African context. Um, as well as that uh, public housing programs uh, open doors for corrupt uh, practices and sometimes uh, used um, to drive political agendas um, uh, in different uh, contexts. Um, and that housing projects often developed in cheap land parcels, remote location, which is an issue when it comes to low income uh, people having access to um, economic uh, opportunities. And this perpetuates low, uh, low living standards for, for the poor. The other aspect that came through um, is the limited, is that um, the, there's limited resources of government, which then um, don't, do not uh, enable um, a provision of subsidies to all those that are in need. Hence, um, the, the, the backlog still remains uh, very high. And um, the, 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 an area of concern is that governments um, find it easier to clear informal settlements than to provide um, housing. Um, and th this is an area where then it, they, 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 there is a view that um, there should be just not just um, a, a reactive um, a, a, a process in terms of development of um, a housing, but a proactive one. Um, so in terms of then the, the conclusions um, from the, the literature analysis is that um, urbanization is regarded as one of the main contributing factors to the demand for low income housing um, in the cities within, the, um, within South Africa. And this also is applicable um, in terms of other countries. And the, the contributing, the key contributing factor to in, inefficient housing delivery is uh, poor policy implementation, lack of skill, corruption, poor access to finance, and poor involvement of um, beneficiaries. While there is a recognition of housing as a right, um, they, they, however, there has not been a, a, a translation of that into sufficient projects and um, a, a, a access, adequate access to housing. Um, a, and that um, the, there is also um, existence of various legislative and policy frameworks 
but these are fragmented um, uh, in terms of um, uh, being uh, uh, owned by different departments um, or different uh, spheres of government, which also has got a clear gap in terms of saying where legislation and policy exists, there is poor enforcement processes um, that is demonstrate for, uh, for uh, that could be demonstrated from um, uh, the, 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 the projects that were, were, were being analyzed. So with specific reference to um, governance then, uh, which is the key focus of my study, is that clearly there is a lack of governance framework um, that uh, guides uh, the delivery of low income housing projects um, within South Africa. In terms of the, the, the accountability and transparency as the key principles of governance, they are mentioned in, in uh, uh, key documents um, uh, like legislation and policies. However, there are no guidelines as to when the projects are being Im uh, implemented, how then um, a, a accountability and transparency is going to be enforced during the implementation of projects, which then um, uh, signifies that there is a gap. Um, the, 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 the other conclusion that I made is that low income housing uh, programs solely are driven by government um, uh, because of uh, the subsidized uh, uh, funding. Uh, which then it's the national, provincial, as well as uh, municipalities as uh, stakeholders, which then excludes um, a, a, to a greater part uh, the private sector as a, a key uh, role play uh, stakeholders in the process, but as well as um, uh, citizens. And uh, the, 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 the other finding is that um, governance uh, and uh, government as concepts, they are used inter interchangeably, while the theory of governance clearly um, uh, puts emphasis that the, the governance and government are two different um, uh, aspects. So this is an area that um, going forward, um, uh, my research uh, is, um, is looking into understanding in terms of saying, how can uh, governance clearly uh, be used um, as, as, as an instrument um, uh, to um, uh, ensure that there is efficiency in the delivery of uh, low income housing and not um, be uh, used interchangeably with uh, the concept of um, a government. So that, um, that then uh, brings me to the end of my presentation and thank you very much. I'll take questions if they are in. Uh, um Thank you for, for your presentation. I think we take one or two questions. Uh, do we have questions? Um, because again, you've just spent about 10 minutes, so we can just ask one or two questions. Do we have questions? Yeah. Okay, if not, let me just pick this one because we said that um, government is supposed to govern and not adm administer buildings. That is what yes. you said. In view of the situation in South Africa, again, I know that uh, because I've been to South Africa many, 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 many times, and I mm. know few there. Don't you think that we, because of the situation in South Africa, that it's going to be difficult for you to be able to separate government and governance to be able to deliver what is needed in terms of housing? We have many, many people they are living in shunted accommodation. Mm. What do you think that the two, at, at this point in time, in terms of development, the two can work together hand in hand? Yes, um, uh, I, I think it, 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 it is possible. Um, while a government in terms of um, a, a, even the fiscal constraints that um, a, especially currently um, is being experienced, it, it is important now to begin to consider a, other approaches so that um, a, a, it's not limited um, to, 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 to the resources that are within the state. One of the aspects that I highlighted, uh, which is coming clearly from the literature, is that um, a, a housing, uh, of course, is is one of the social uh, factors. So it competes with other um, a social um, a, 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 a aspects, such as um, a social the, the social grants, uh, which are supporting um, a people without a, a, a basic income. And uh, this has been more prevalent um, with 
COVID-19, where then the budgets within government had to be um, reallocated um, uh, to, to health. Um, and then it, it, it meant then, you know, th th there was an impact in terms of the planned projects um, for a, a housing infrastructure that had to be, uh, it, that were impacted um, by, by that. So th th there is then a, a need to, to then move in terms of saying yes, to create an enabling environment through legislation, but not to play um, a sole role when it comes to delivery of um, infrastructure, but also in terms of the inputs um, of the, the citizens in terms of their preference, um, whether it's in terms of design, whether it's in terms of location, because it's important. That's why then we end up with um, some of the ghost projects because then the 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 the, the, the um, targeted um, uh, beneficiaries would not consider whatever the output as what then they, they, what is what they, what they, they they aspire. Okay, thank you. Then are you then adv advocating the uh, working together of the private and public sector to deliver housing, social housing in South Africa? Is that what you are trying to achieve or? where you are going in, with your research? Yes, um, it, it's to develop a framework that will enable um, a, a, the, the, the private sector, the, 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 the citizens as well as government um, to, to, to be involved in the decision making um, of different projects. Um, so that it's it's looked into uh, per project, not that it's a decision of government when they fail then it means that that project would have failed completely. Thank you. Uh, quickly, we have one question from David. David, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your paper, Nana. Uh, just to, to the, the, the last point you mentioned about um, the framework, how does income, this is people's income now, how does it play, yes. how, how much of a factor does it play? Because at times when we say low, low cost, we tend to forget the fact that you know the the, the the beneficiaries have to still contribute some money so how does their income play into this um uh, uh, thank you for that question david um uh, uh, they they remember in south africa what happens is that um there, there is um a basic uh, a, a income grant uh, uh, through government but is to look into saying not necessarily in terms of them contributing, but it's their participation in the decision making in terms of um, what their needs are, what their priorities are, then necessarily their financial contribution. Because at the end of the day, um, I think now there's also um, a policy shift uh, in terms of no longer providing um, uh, housing structures, but providing land so that those that um, can ec economically um, afford to build houses for themselves can begin to do so, not to be constrained by the fact that they don't have access to land. So that is um, considering to saying those that then are still in need, they will be co uh, uh, they will be um, uh, consulted uh, in terms of what their housing needs are then to be provided on by some uh, or, or uh, to be provided with something that they feel um it's being imposed on them so it's more um about consultation um and also um capacitating them to hold um a government institutions and other say, a private sector role players accountable on whatever would have been committed as part of the the the, the projects that needs to be developed for them so I think we, we've got to stop now and move. We still have two papers um, that we still need to look at and we have about 20 minutes left. Uh, can we go to the, the next one is a pre-recorded is by Christ is um, by Gabriel Canto Blanco. Uh, can we have that please? Sorry, I couldn't ask. It's, so it's crisis driven literature in PPP a network analysis. Okay. Do you hear me? We, we can hear you. I thought it's pre-recorded. It's not. No, no, no. Oh, okay. That's what I was told there. It's online pre -re Okay. Thank you. Please, can you start? Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, please. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Uh, 
our research is, is called Crisis Driven Literature in PPPs and Network Analysis. Um, basically, our research was based on, on previous analysis during my PhD career in, in developing countries such as Colombia and Chile. But after in the, in the last part of my PhD, I, I work uh, in Italy, Netherlands, in the UK, and I realized that uh, specifically the crisis motivated first of all by, by the COVID-19 uh, aftermath, but later on on the supply chain, uh, it's really affecting PPPs as most of the construction projects, and that's why uh, I decided uh, along with uh, Jose Guevara to, to work on this literature review. So basically, um, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, brought a lot of consequences on the, on the PPPs worldwide and obviously affect the, the fiscal pressure on the governments which is a main reason to increase the emphasis on PPPs because as you know, PPPs is a way to use a uh, project finance in order to get some private finance uh, for allowing the, the public sector to uh, give a long-term financing mechanisms for especially for mega infrastructure. So basically, uh, to analyze the issues and the main uh, challenges for sustainability of PPPs, uh, we decided to unravel the body of knowledge of the PPP, but uh, regarding the previous research on a crisis, for example, the global financial crisis in, in 2008, and trying to uncover the main uh, topics and the main trends of the research when, uh, let's say, global crisis affects uh, markets and more, more recently under the COVID-19 pandemic. So basically, uh, this research uh, conducts a traditional bibliometric analysis, but then is complemented by a network analysis. And as you may know, obviously, PPPs around the world, it's useful for governments. This is why in, in developing countries is really, really uh, gaining more and more uh, representation among the, the public infrastructure development uh, to help governments with significant fiscal constraints to develop a, especially mega mega infrastructure, but uh, also to allow uh, to address the, the infrastructure gaps in these countries. But as you know, obviously in developed countries also it's significantly uh, relevant. So basically uh, we can say that crisis used to uh, be analyzed in two different ways let's say global crisis that affects simultaneously a, a several countries such as the COVID-19 crisis, more recently the Ukraine's war, and specifically the changes in financial markets uh, around the world affect obviously the PPPs uh, as a project finance uh, scheme and obviously these macroeconomic issues will uh, implies some significant aftermath. But also there are some crises that affect heterogeneously uh, the countries, which are more related with local crises. So let's say the crisis may affect uh, PPPs in both ways, in, in the, let's say, global crisis, but heterogeneously according to the specific conditions of, of the local uh, conditions. This research was based, well, the, the let's say the, the search for the literature review was based, uh, first of all, obviously in PPPs. So as you can see here, the keywords are in this first part is focused only on PPPs. 
in, in any of the, let's say, the synonyms, PPPs or PFI, as is called in the UK, or P3, as is called in the US. And also, we include a specifically crisis, a even force major, but a, to include the most right, recent research, we also include a pandemic, coronavirus, a coronavirus COVID-19, and something as recession. And we decide to use the time span between 2008 and 2020 because we were specifically interested on, on the research after the, the global financial crisis until um, the, the COVID-19. Uh, but it's only until 2020. Then, uh, once the, the bibliometric analysis was conducted, the network development was uh, also uh, developed uh, using both viewers, uh, specifically to analyze some clusters within the, the literature. Well, once we, we finish the literature review, we realized something interesting. As you can see here, Basically, the peak on the crisis PPP research start not obviously on 2008, but let's say since uh, 2013, let's say five years uh, later, which means that the, the research trend motivated by the global financial crisis after on the PPPs uh, start to gain momentum, let's say in this way, uh, in the midterm, because basically this research was focused on case studies and, and some specific approaches that requires gathering information. And obviously, as you may remember, uh, the crisis affected uh, obviously in a global way, but also heterogeneously according to the regions. For example, in, in some countries in Europe, only the crisis was significantly uh, uh, noticed uh, after four years later than, than the US. So basically, I would say the, the first trend based on the global financial crisis after money PPPs uh, have a significant repercussions uh, in the midterm. But most recently, as you can see, it, let's say in, in 2020, the new peak on research on PPP crisis was motivated by COVID. This implies a significant uh, change on the trends in comparison with the global financial crisis. Since, uh, let's say, on one hand, the global financial crisis developed especially uh, research in the, in the midterm, but the COVID-19 aftermaths in PPPs and infrastructure especially develop a significant trend in the law in the short term obviously so 2020 later on in 2021 that we recently uh, also included it's significantly higher than the than the trends based on the global finance financial crisis but let's focus on on the most relevant topic so here in the network representation as you can see there are uh, let's say the most relevant topics sorry uh, you have two this. minutes more please two okay, minutes perfect. perfect yeah please uh, basically um the evolution in, in the in the research in the crisis in the crisis research was from institutional uh, let's say in the, from the institutional level uh, topics such as risk management and real options methodologies to uh, more recently organizational level focus not uh, so much in risk management itself as uh, stakeholders and relational governance. So actually the topics has evolved. We identified seven different clusters, basically uh, focused on contractual governance, public financial aspects, project efficiency, risk valuation, user payments, demand, and project performance on the increases. And basically, uh, let's say two of these uh, clusters are focused on uh, here in project performance and contractual governance, which is a significant trend uh, 
based on this, but the most relevant trend actually is contractual and governance, as you can see, is the, the, the most significant representation, which means a significant shift in the traditional approach uh, to give higher preponderance to, to stakeholders. And let's say not the traditional uh, preponderance on responsible, but in impacted the stakeholders. Then we have also uh, some intermediate clusters focused spe specifically on, on financial aspect, which is uh, traditional, but also in a specific uh, features from user pay uh, PPPs, uh, the user payments, tariffs, some of these things, and also uh, some specific issues regarding demand which is especially significant for developing countries. But let's say to, to summarize uh, like some conclusions, there are three specific clusters that are closely related. The financial aspects that are specifically focused, not let's say in shadow tolls or uh, availability payments, PPPs, but in user payments, PPP demand, if we are talking about toll roads, so traffic, user payments, this is a significant constraint uh, for the analysis among crises. And specifically, developing countries are struggling to reach an, an, a balance between the expectations of the impacted the stakeholders and the, and the, let's say, tolls that are able to pay in comparison with the, with the economic social uh, constraints. Then, please, can you go to your conclusion, please? Perfect. And these two clusters are focused on contractual governance and risk valuation, which is the traditional. And finally, the, lay, the later uh, clusters are focused on project efficiency and performance under crisis. So basically, new performance indicators are aiming to improve uh, management skills, project management skills, and let's say contingency management among the, the, the countries. So basically those were the most relevant insights among the, the research that we want to highlight. Thank you thank again. You um, so thank you. Um, we'll not be able to take questions, but please, I want to remind you that tomorrow at 2 Sorry, I want to remind you at 2 a.m. tomorrow, we are going to have a debate and brainstorming. Again, some of these issues that we have discussed, we can pick them there. Again, please, we are invited to our meeting tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. Uh, uh, when we are going to have a lot of discussion, we have time for discussion around some of the issues in terms of uh, what we have discussed today. It's, sorry, I won't be able to take some questions now. Uh, because again, the time is well spent and um, it's fast spent. So come tomorrow, 2 a.m. for this discussion. It's going to be wonderful to see all of you there engaging with this discussion and picking the development around public-private partnership. Thank you. Um, the last paper there is by Philip Wong. I think Philip is here. Again, it's supposed to be pre-recorded, but I've seen Philip here. Do you want to present now, Philip? You are muted, please. We can't hear you. Sorry, we can't hear you. No, we can't. Philip, we can't hear you at all. You are muted. We can see you, yeah, we can see you, but we can't hear you.
No, we can't. Unfortunately. Do you know what is happening there? Can you look at your device around the... Let me see if you go to your device setting. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. You can hear me now? Yes, yeah. Um, okay, just a few words regarding my paper. Um, the Hobart government is working hard to develop the city, but the bottom neck is the transports and the affordability of the housing is uh, deteriorating. So my paper uh, intends to answer the question regarding how to solve the problem of the traffic and also how to attract more people to go to Hobart, especially those will help the development of the Hobart city. Um, I have recorded the presentation and please click the link and um, enjoy my presentation and your question will be very welcome and I will answer your question after uh, if you've got any question regarding my presentation. Thank you. We know who's going to open it for us. I can't see Sanjin, is it something that you can? I don't know what to do with the presentation. I, I, I don't know where it is here. I'm, I'm here. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, I've recorded my presentation. Please, sir. Uh, oh, you can hear me? This is Andrew. Andrew, can you? Yeah, okay, so I've, I've only got your paper in a PDF, but if you like, I can share the PDF and you can talk about what's going on on the page. Uh, that's, that's the best I can do, unless you Upload the video through the um, Oxford portal. I don't know where the where the video could be unless let me check. Uh, sessions. Can you go through the paper maybe? Briefly with us. No. Okay. No, that's not the one. That's a PDF. Yeah, yeah. This one. This one. This one here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Is that the one? Okay, yeah. Can you start playing, please? Um, this isn't a video, this is just a PDF. Okay, do you want to go through that with us then? So, that'll just read the words. Yeah, sorry, Philip. This is a uh, this is uh, all I've got from you. Um, if you do have the video, or if you want to put this in a PowerPoint format, maybe um, you can do that through the Oxford portal. But um, the best I can do here is just scroll through and you talk about what's happening on the on the page. Is that okay, Philip? Please, can can we go through the slides? They can change that for you. From one slide to the other, just go through that with us because we don't have the video. Oh, 
I'm uploading the presentation. Okay, beautiful, thank you. So now we have to go to
Okay, that's that's the end of my pre. I that's the end of my presentation. I finished. Again, uh, thank you everyone. Um, I don't know why we are muted here. It should, it should, it should not happen this way, uh, but that's OK. Um, can we have um, one please uh, trying to round off this um, just to give an overview because we can't take questions again. Uh, we are 18 minutes. We've spent overspent by 18 minutes, but one one one. Are you there, please? Is Moan there? Please, Andrew, please, can you unmute Moan, please? Hello, can you, can you hear me now, Akin? Yes, can you please, hear yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I was, uh, my, my mouth was shut after now. I was just unmuted by Andrew. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah, so uh, I don't think uh, we have much time for closing remarks. What is the scheduled uh, finish time for this? I thought it was uh, about we run over. Am I, am I right, Andrew? Have, I, have we not run over the time? Yes, we so, have. Yeah, it's supposed to so close for I, one hour. Yeah, OK, so all I want to say is uh, that I put a message on the chat about tomorrow's sessions. Akin, you briefly mentioned, uh, you did mention rather the, the meeting, the brainstorming workshop. Now, uh, I think you gave the UK time of your screen, uh, but yes. uh, yeah, the Melbourne time is uh, uh, different. So the Melbourne time, I put it on the chat. It's, uh, I believe, uh, 1.30 p.m. So that's for the brainstorming session. But we do have a session even before that. Uh, the second paper session where there will be six papers over one and a half hours. So it will be longer than this one. And uh, that will be a live. Uh, it's it's a hybrid session, so sorry. And that will be chaired by Sajani. And uh, uh, it will uh, start, I believe, at uh, 11 a.m. Melbourne time. So to repeat, 11 a.m. Melbourne time tomorrow, Wednesday, will be the next paper session. And the brainstorming workshop will be 1.30 p.m. Melbourne time. Um, and for the paper session, Sajani uh, will chair it. Uh, and I will try to be there. It will be 6.30 in the morning where I am. And it will be pretty early for, uh, I think that's the one you said 2 p.m. I can. So I think that that's a paper session that uh, sorry 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Yes, in the UK. 2 a.m. UK. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. So that's a paper session. But I think I hope you will be able to join the next one, which will be uh, a little later. Uh, that yes. is the 1:30 p.m. Melbourne. It's which still a UK. Yeah. yeah. So one uh, that would be 9 a.m. for me in Sri Lanka, and uh, for Akin it will be probably 4:30 a.m. <laughs> in the uk yeah. yeah so so that that's a paper session so you don't have to be there because sajani is sharing it and uh, i will try to be there at least at the beginning but it's very important that we all come together as akin said uh, for the brainstorming workshop where we had a good session in uh, 
in uh, CIB uh, three years ago at the WBC in, in Hong Kong, and we came out with a lot of good ideas. Uh, so we hope that we can have some active participation, even though we, part of us are, some of us are not there. Uh, so look forward to that um, uh, tomorrow as well as the paper session. So I know Sajin is there. So Sajin, I'm just telling you, I will try to join and tell, uh, please tell anyone who is there to unmute me. <laughs> uh, and if they uh, so, so desire, they can also uh, unblock my video, at least at the beginning. And after you start, I, it's OK, because I might leave after 15 minutes or half an hour, uh, 7 a.m. Sri Lanka time. Uh, but you will start at uh, 11 a.m. Melbourne time, 11 a.m. And 1.30 p.m. is the brainstorming. So that's all I have to say, Akin. Yeah, and then uh, uh, just for the purpose of Andrew, the ones that we've attended before, the video were unlocked and also so, so everybody was unmuted. So again, um, which were which allowed good participation, uh, and it did it did it did not affect the the quality of the of the wavelength of the wavelength. So I think you should you should, you should think about that. Otherwise, um, it would be nice to see at least the faces of some of us. That would be nice. Again, thank you everyone. Sorry that we are not able to ask to have time for questions because again and then because we have overspent our time again thank you everybody for coming we we'll see you tomorrow bye bye thank you bye.